Welcome back to Remove Before Race, and this is probably our most special episode ever. I'm with a man who needs absolutely no introduction for you AMG addicts, but I'll give one anyway. He is the prime, the legendary engine builder of Mercedes AMG. He is Michael Kubler, better known as F1 Mike 28 on Instagram. He's your friend, he's our friend, and today we are with his special AMG White Shark. We're going to go for a ride, we're going to learn more about Mike as well, but first, Let's talk about his car. So, hey, Mike. How you doing, brother? Good. You? Very good, man. Um, so, this is your white shark, yes. and it's well known now all over Instagram. But every car you have is in what we call the Kubler spec. So, tell us a bit about the Kubler spec and why you love it so much. Uh, first of all, I love white as yep. a color. And with the black essence, it really comes aggressive, in yep. my opinion. And this year, even more special with the carbon package one and two. Yeah, so you get is, carbon everywhere, really, yes. don't you? Which was the, the press spec, and I really loved the yep. car from the press. So it was the only way to go yes. in this spec. So with the carbon package one and two, you get the full mount. Yes. You get the side, side sills, mirrors, mirrors, side mirrors, rear wing, rear diffuser. So it's yes. all carbon, Definitely. which is just like the, the press one that they showed yes. us. What else about, what else is Kubler spec like? You have to have the black, the satin the black, black wheels? The satin black wheels, uh, the panoramic roof. Yep. Yeah. And the then inside, have. you always like your comfort, comfort seats yes. as well, right? Yes. Because they're um, yeah. comfort ventilated yes. and heated. Yes. This year with the seat heating and the seat cooling. Yep. I really love the, the touch of the AMG, uh, AMG crest on yes. the headrest. Yeah. That's which, a big point. Which you don't get in the performance seats. Yes. At least yes. not in the C-Class, only yes. in the E's. Exactly. So it's a bit more AMG. Because Definitely. in the GTs you still get it in the center console, right? Yeah. Definitely. Is there anything else that, I mean, your, your E350 was also in Cooper spec yeah. as much as it could be, right? Yes. And then your White Knight was as well, your C63 saloon. Is, it, is, that, is there any other reason for that, like market conditions in, in the German market for resale or uh, things like this? The resale is a, is a big point, but the most important point is the taste. Yeah, it's the passion. I, yeah, I because white. even we look at the AMG showroom, they always seem to favor having diamond white cars as opposed to colors for when they do brochures, indeed, in the new showroom. I think all yeah. the cars they've had have always been in the kind of Kubler yes. spec, right? Yeah. So that's pretty cool. It shows where your heart <laughs> is as well. It's, it's firmly AMG. Yeah. So um, what I was thinking is we could go for a little drive. Of course. Uh, do a little interview, learn more about the man himself rather than everything else that we've already seen on Instagram. Yeah. So what do you think? Should we go for a ride? Of course. Of course. Let's get in. Yeah. So Mike, first of all, this is a dream for me because I was a fan of yours before we met, just being a customer. So being here with you in the car, this is pretty awesome for me. So you probably connect with a lot of fans and, and everything, but I don't think a lot of people know your story of how you came to be who you are. So. Where did it all start working for Mercedes? Is it just you, or did it did it link back even further than that? Uh, it's a family tradition. It started with my great grandfather, who worked for Mercedes for 45 years, then my grandfather, my father, and I'm trying to keep the legacy alive. Wow! So your for the brand. Your grandfather started working for Mercedes. Yes. Gosh. So that must have been close to when like the really early days of Mercedes then? Yes, wow. definitely, definitely. And also in the engine production. Also in engine? Wow. Yes. So he was, he was, that's incredible. Well, and your father then, did, did he have a different role? Did he? My father was uh, a chief cook. Right. So also, he, he, he was the only one in a different role. Yes. My grandfather, my great grandfather and me. But making hearts happy in a different way, I think. Yes. Huh? yes. So you're, you're back in the times of your grandfather, were, were the engines generally 
made by by hand then? Uh, during that time? More, more than the cereal production from Mercedes. Yes. But at AMG, you already know, we handcrafted the engine, so the engines are all hand built. Always been one man, one engine yeah, at AMG. Yeah, definitely. So this was, is it, since you were young, did you always want to be uh, do what your your grandfather and father did, or yes. was there a stage yes. when you wanted to be like a fireman or a superhero like other kids? No, I wanted to be an engine builder, and especially for AMG. So you you just knew from day one that yes. that's that's who you yes. are. That's that's, awesome. the, that's the way to go for me. So was it you you studied for it, you worked your way there, and then there's like apprenticeships and all the rest of it, and eventually you got there. I mean, what was that moment like when you finally became an engineer or an engine builder for? Mercedes. In the first moment, unbelievable, yeah. because the dream came true. In the second moment, proud to reach the goal that I had as yeah. a kid. So, I mean, it must have been incredible for your for your dad as yes, well yes, to, wit to witness this. Was your grandfather still uh, with you at the time, so he couldn't? Well, I'm sure he's proud of you looking down. Yes. But um, it must have been amazing for your father to see his son yeah. achieve that goal, like just like his father had. Definitely. So what was like the first stuff that you were making for AMG? The first what? stuff was the uh, CLK, yep. CLK DTM. Oh engines. wow, that was your first? That was the first project I was involved. That's like a unicorn. <laughs> definitely, definitely. It, it started like with a bang. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and the years, the years after, So have you built like everything since then? Have you worked on every engine ever? Ne nearly, nearly every engine. Yeah. Nearly every so like engine. you've you've touched. I mean, SLR was made at, at AMG as well, right? Yes. So you've worked on SLR. You've worked on obviously all the GT3 cars you've been 50, involved in. Fifty-five engines. There were sixty-three when we started with uh, natural aspirated six point two. Yep. Worked for them, and then and then the most time after the natural aspirated V8. B12 uh, engines, yes. 65 ones. Building the 65 was quite special because it was really a small team. Yes. We were around about four or five engine builders. Yes. We were allowed to build, I have to say, allowed to build the B12 engine. Does because it? Because it's a special, special engine. Special the training? Special training. The yeah. customers are special. Yeah. So. You need to be uh, qualified for this. Yeah, it's a more rigorous process to get qualified and yes. accepted to do this. Definitely. And after this, the, one of the most special projects started for me. It was for Pagani. Pagani is a big thing. It's a, it's a huge story for you, and it's something that you uh, obviously we're friends now, and we talk about this all the time. Yeah. But it's something really close to your heart. So. Um, Tell us about the Pagani thing. Was how how did that all start? And and obviously you were involved very early on. Yeah, the thing is uh, on projects like this, Pagani or later the GT3 engines, you will choose. So yes. The thing is, it's not like I I want to build this. The way to go on such projects like this is your chief comes and say, you are the man. You're the guy. You are the guy, and you will make this project. So that's incredible. They they've had that confidence. Yeah. Pretty much from day one, I guess, because if they yes. handed you the responsibility for the CLK and DTM, yeah. then that's that's big, right? Yeah, very big. So now very Pagani big. is is progressed in a way that there's more cars, there's more special editions, the engines are getting perhaps even more unique as time goes along yes. for them, so more complicated. Um, and you've also developed relationships with with indeed the customers of, of the, the Pagani customer base who are. Now becoming good friends. Um, yes. I think of a few guys on Instagram. You got Greg who, with his um, what does he call his green one? That BC of his. I, I call it Green Hornet. Yeah. He, he has no special name for it. But yeah. For yeah. Me it's Green the Hornet. Green Hornet. Yeah. And it's one of who I rub BC. Only 20 will be made. Incredible. It's 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 a custom car, but he made a one off. Even more custom. Yes. Even more special. Definitely. Different um, front, front split, and things like this. So, where did Instagram come into all of this? Because that's like a fairly new phenomenon in the world.
world, but you were like bang on there early on, right? The thing is, I, as an engine builder, you want to see an engine badge on an engine sign from you. Yes. That's, that's, that's make you proud. It gives you the special feeling because of our philosophy, the one man one engine philosophy, and it's, it's a hard thing for me and for all the other builders too. Yes. So I started something. I'm not. I have to say, I'm not the Facebook guy. Yeah. All my friends have Facebook and yeah. stuff like this, and I wanted to, to make something different mm. because I think I am maybe a bit, little bit different little than special. others. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so I wanted to have something different. So how many years has it been on, on Instagram it's now? It's now seven years. Seven we years, wow. And, seven year. and you're just about to hit 200,000 followers, right? Yes, yes. And all of these these people are all yes. Supreme AMG, Pagani, Mercedes fans. Yes. And they all can, I mean, I talk to anybody who I know in, on Instagram, and I know a fair few people now. Everybody knows F1 Mike. And that's what they call you, right? It's F1 yeah. Mike. Everyone knows you, it doesn't matter if they're a BMW guy, they're an Audi guy, they're into their Ferraris. Yes. Everyone knows and respects F1 Mike, and that's amazing, man. I mean, you've pretty much got a friend, I guess, in every single part of the world somehow, right? Yeah. So have you built like a lot of friendships that you can travel anywhere and you, you've got like um, your friends in, in most parts yeah. of the world? Well, what's, what's that like as a feeling for you? The feeling is unbelievable. Because when you start something like this, you start like ev everyone with zero follower. Yeah. <laughs> like we yeah. And like, you work at it, and you work yes, at it, and you yes, work at it. Yes. The grind. Yeah. Right? Definitely. And even more special because of the Pagani thing. The yes. Pagani thing is it's a car which starts round about one million for the Huayra crew. That's right. And for the roads we are talking about two and a half million. Yeah. And for the BC. Because of modifications from some guys, they want to make it really unique. Like with the carbon bodies and all that for kind example, of stuff. For yeah. example, we are talking about four to four and a half million yeah, yeah. for a car. But what so a you, car at the end of it, man. Yeah, so you can imagine that are not the guy you live next to him. Yes. So the guys are special. They are special. Who ordered, who yeah. ordered the car. And so you get connections. How do you find um, the GT3, because that's a totally different side of engine building, right? Because yeah. there's regulations and talk to us a little bit about that. Is that yeah. is, is, do you enjoy that, that side of the job as well? Definitely. The, the GT3 engine is one of my favorite engines to build. Really? Yeah. Because it's you have to you have to take a look because of the regulation. You have to make a lot of measurements, collect data for the fear in the regulation yeah. in so, so it's the process it's much harder yeah and this is what I like yeah easy, easy this is where you thrive isn't it yeah, it's, it's, easy, it's easy, easy is a thing that can do everyone yeah yeah in my opinion you get celebrities coming in they're making the little engines and doing the bits and pieces right but they're not doing that on the GT3 yeah. Yeah. right Definitely. So. Definitely. so the GT3 it's, it's also a hard thing like the Pagani. Yes. Because this engine, you are involved in the development, you are building the engines, you know the race teams for the GT3s, yeah. you know the race drivers. We also, our friend Jan, yes. is, is the development driver for the GT3 and for the new car, the GT4. Right. So you, you guys must check his channel out as well, because he, yeah. he's always pumping out. It's all in German, but it's all very watchable. On this channel. And this is a relationship relationship that makes it even more special. Yeah. When you are in the development in the building stuff. So along with obviously there's a high amount of responsibility for GT3 engine production. But then when you achieve the goals and the teams are winning, that's gotta give you some pride inside as yes. well, right? Definitely. Definitely. So let's talk about you yourself. Um, Obviously, we know quite a bit of the information that we just spoke about, but tell it, you, your choice in music is a thing now on Instagram, right? Because you put your yes. videos up of your yes. cars, yes. and guys are like, yes. whoa, he likes like hip-hop, and 
and R&B and all yeah. this kind. So, so what are you into into music? What's your what's your jam? What's your thing? Uh, I think in the area I was living first, there was. I have to say I'm half German and I'm half Greek. Yeah. So I have a good relationship to to people who are born in other countries and yes. stuff like this yeah. because we have the same thing, the same roots. Yes. In, in different way but yeah. and so my my music is was and is always good school yeah music. for me it's not it's not all about the texts and stuff like this they are singing I love the beats the beat, for yeah. me for me it's, the, it's a beat thing yeah anything so, with a good beat right yeah definitely and so every video I upload has has some old school yeah. music I think it's awesome and it adds something yeah. just to your personal past because you only do it on your personal, your personal it's, stuff. It's it's about the personal taste. Yeah. And my taste is like this. Yeah. Well, it's all linked, isn't it? It's the passion and, and it's the personal taste. So. And you're into films as well, right? Like me. So you like Batman? Yes. Also like Batman. Definitely. What else? What, what's like your, your, your classic film? Uh, the, the uh, classic classic film. films that you love? Films with Al Pacino, Robert oh, yeah. De Niro, the old, yeah. the old stuff. Yeah, definitely. I really like uh, Eddie Murphy. Oh, he's a legend, man. Beverly Hills Cop. Beverly Hills Cop. I like, crack old, myself up yes, on this one. Yes, <laughs> especially the, the first and the second yeah. movie. You remember it's that scene amazing. when he walks into the builder's yard? Yeah. And he gets everyone to stop. Yeah. And he's like, there should be no right angles on this yeah. building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. What, what, what filmmaking that is. Yeah. Um, From the series, the actual series Game of Thrones. Oh, that's amazing, it's isn't it? You must like the Drogon easy. name then, right? But we call him Jon Snow, the, the yeah, DCC yeah. edition. It's, it's, it's between us. That's, that's just, well, I guess <laughs> it's, it's between, between, between all of us now. Yeah. Now it's between, now it's between all, all of us. us. But, uh, yeah, awesome. So this car, yeah. this is a special, special car, and I've always said, for me personally, the C63S Coupe has got to be the the quintessential V AMG. And I'm, I know there's the GT, I know we've had the SLS, but for me, this just speaks AMG because it's it's still part Mercedes, but it's so AMG. What, what's your? How do you find this car? What's your opinion on it? Is it, is it similar for you? Is it different? It's the best, the best all-rounder. Yeah. The best all-rounder for the MG. You can say that the E63 is the perfect all-rounder because it's for families. It has the power. It's amazing. It's a beast. It's a monster. It's a monster. Straight line. The, the traction is unbelievable. And it's so clever now. So Plus, clever. But I love the, the look yeah. of the coupe with the wide arches. The stance when it comes. It's amazing. And it's louder. It's and it's louder. I mean, we can hear it. You guys can hear. We've got, we've done our uh, exhaust on our ass true sound in the car, and it is, it's just orgasmic, man. It's, it's there's nothing that sounds like it. Yeah. Definitely. Even the GT, I think, isn't quite as loud on the go. Um, when you're just driving around town like this, uh, the GTC, maybe the GTR is obviously. Well, that's the R. Yes. Yes. But um. It's a spare head. Yeah. 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 But the GTs, the normal GTs, the uh, the E63 only gets louder in the later rev ranges. So this is a, a special car. If, if I'm going to guess this, knowing you, right, as a friend, if money was no object, you'd buy Pagani. The ultimate dream car of me is the CAK GTR. Ah, the unicorn that's, itself. That's yeah. That's what I call the car. Nowadays, yeah. everyone is calling the car unicorn. Yeah. You started it. To me. You started it. <laughs> yes. Let's get that clear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, when money doesn't, I would buy the perfect garage yeah. from me. Be the CLK GT1. Yeah. It would be the Pagani Guayra PC. Yeah. And from AMG side, I would say the E63 S. That's that's hard to beat. Hell of a garage. That's one hell of a garage. I'm trying to think what mine would be now. I think I'd definitely have a C63 S Coupe because they're just amazing. Um, 
AMG GTR probably. And I think I'm going to match you on the uh, Huayra BC, I think. But in hammer spec yeah. is what I would go for, I think. I wish. We both wish. Yeah. <laughs> hey, who good. knows? Maybe one day, yeah. right? We're it's working dream, hard. We're grinding. Maybe it can come true. It can come true, maybe. through now the AMG road trip is getting darker we've had a great day today definitely um, it's definitely. been great just meeting with everyone yes yes uh, I think we'll probably do it again next year but how is this th this trip how does it connect to you what's, what's your um because it's grown right I mean uh, the last course, two years it's of grown course, to... of course the last two years we, uh, I started with uh, Beatrice Beatrice and, uh, and Ahmed. Ahmed. Ahmed we were yeah. the first so we were three people. Yeah. Met. I showed them some stuff here in Falkenbach. They made their emotion tour. Yes. Uh, the year after, the Stamparker crew joined us with some friends. So it was growing slightly. Slightly, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but now, especially 50 years anniversary. This has been incredible. Really, really great. Yeah. But it's it's not about numbers. It's no. about the people and the quality you have. The quality. That's right. On this. So now we and have the Stan Blogger crew. Yes. Uh, Thomas Sachs have joined us. Yeah. Even Mercedes have got involved in it, which is amazing. I mean, yeah. We've, yeah. Look, we've only done it seriously yeah. for maybe two years, yeah. or maybe even one year, yeah. and for it to become like an official uh, thing that's been um, documented by Mercedes. Such an honor for us. Yes, yes. definitely, you definitely. Know? And it's great that we can share it with you guys. Because um, as we always say, look, we're not unreachable guys. If you message me or Mike on Instagram, we will talk to you. As long as you don't ask us silly questions like, is it petrol that goes into an AMG engine? <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> we love you, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. we can't answer this sort of stuff. Yeah. But you, this is your chance to connect with us, talk to us on Instagram, let's discuss stuff. Who knows, maybe one day you'll be joining us on a road trip as well. Yeah. Uh, this for us is it's a great honor. We've got, you know, removed before race being here for the first year. We've only been going for a few months. To get this support is awesome. So it's been an amazing trip. The other thing I asked online is if we could get some questions from people for you. So let's see whether anyone's asked anything, anything good. Is there any car that you really respect outside of the AMG range? First of all, I respect all car brands. Because Good it's answer. A, this is a true petrol head uh, right here. It's, it's a thing everyone wants to build the best car. Of course. We all know the best car isn't built yet. Yeah. That's, that's a big point. Everyone is very good. We have, we have the best car and stuff like this. The best car isn't built yet and maybe won't, won't be built. Yeah. So. emotion I have when I sit here in my C63S yeah. or in a different AMG. So uh, we all have to respect no, brands, that's the thing. Because everyone is working hard to build the perfect car for their customers, maybe to get new customers. So we get a lot of comments, don't we, that's saying, oh, this car is better or that thing did that first, but that's not what it's about, really. If a guy wants an M3, he's going to go and buy an M3. Of course. Because yeah. that's that's when his thing, he, right? Yeah, when he gets the feeling, I need an M3, I yeah. sit in, I get the emotions, yeah. I I like I this part of the steering yes. or, you know, yeah. whatever it is. I respect this. Yeah. That's a great, there we go. We've got a, a great point near the end of this video, which 
is awesome. Oh, someone's asking about the sound of this car. Are the coupes louder than uh, the saloon in the estate? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely louder. Yeah. Definitely louder. Yeah. I think it's much closer to the GT, right? Yeah. yeah. It's probably the structure of the car and, and whatever, but I think it's probably a conscious choice by AMG as well. It's to bring it's the car. A, it's, a, it's a construction thing and the next thing is uh, the, the customer range you want to, uh, to reach. Yes. So if you, if you buy an S63 or you buy an E63, I would say you are in the older generation. Yes. You are a businessman yes. and you want to have fun. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you are... You got the best of both worlds. Yeah. yeah. You can yeah. put your exhaust on, yeah. performance exhaust, and you have a great sound. Yeah. But when you are driving a, a, a GT and stuff like this, they are sports cars. Yeah. Speaking so, of performance exhaust, you always keep it on. Yeah. You heard it from the man himself now. That shit's on. If not, yeah. he'll find on. you. He'll find you. <laughs> I like the Taken reference, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we're back at AMG HQ. Yeah. And just to finish off this video, on a personal note, just really want to thank you for everything you do for all of us and for being in this video on Remove Before Race today. It's a big my, honor. It's my pleasure. Um, and I, I hope that we will see you more in the future yeah. and hopefully do more stuff together, which would be great. Yes. But as a parting gift, as a parting gift, I have something for you. I have a special gift right here. It's a prototype of the one man one case in Kubler spec. Amazing. For you sir. Thank you very much. Anytime buddy. Appreciate it. Anytime. Yeah. So if you guys want one as well you need to pre-order with Rock Studio but yeah. that's a special one. It's a one-off. It's for Mike himself. It's a Kubler spec spec case. But thank you Mike. Thank you so much brother. It means the world and um, welcome. we will see you again soon. You will see yeah. Mike hopefully on Remove Before Race and give him a follow. Of course he's so close to 200k guys please. Help him get there. And if you do follow him, send him a message you. saying you came from Re Remove Before Race. Yeah. Um, there is more stuff we're doing on this trip as well. So like and subscribe and we'll see you all again soon. Next time on Remove Before Race. In the final part of this series, we go to the AMG Road Trip 2017 meetup and introduce you to some friends and Instagrammers from the Mercedes gang. We also annoy JSY AMG about his love for German sausage. We then take over the Mercedes Museum in Stuttgart to meet a film icon and finally return to AMG HQ for a tour of the new showroom, paying specific attention to what could be the C63 of SUVs, the new GLC 63S. We then end the trip with some car talk between the team. And next week I get the distinct honour and pleasure to interview Valtteri Bottas, star driver for the Mercedes AMG F1 team. So submit your questions for me to ask him below and subscribe to Remove Before Race to see it all.